Hello everyone, welcome back, Dome here and in this video I'm going to be checking out this guy right here. This is the knob, this is a controller that can control pretty much anything you throw at it, including Cubase. Let's check it out. So I'll be honest with you, I've been waiting for this for about two years now. I've been on the website, I've been checking out all the things that it can do, and to be honest with you, the first thing that struck me was how cool it looks. This is basically handmade out of wood. Um, I think it was on Kickstarter or something like this, and it's a beauty, okay? So it's made of wood, it has two switches, and they feel so, so well made. Let's appreciate the sound. I mean, they feel sturdy, they're made of nice materials, and then we have the wheel right here, which is the star of the show, of course. This is all touch sensitive, by the way. So what is the knob? Let's start with the basics. The knob is a cursor controller in its very basic form. It can also do scroll wheel functions, all these things, you can do them with this one. And you might say, well, I've seen this before, the CC121 can do this with the AI knob, my Monogram CC also does some scrolling with the Orbiter, but this is different. This, you can customize it exactly like you want and it can really, really control pretty much anything. So I've been using this for about three months now. I took my time, I wanted to actually integrate it in my setup before I made a video. And of course, this is not a video that's been paid by Knob. They have no control about what I'm gonna say. They haven't watched the video, but I'm genuinely excited about this product and I wanted to share this with you. I had many people that reached out to me and they were saying, oh, I can't get a hold of a CC121. I love the AI Knob. And this might be the controller for you. I'm gonna show you all the things that you can do, but I'm only gonna be scratching the surface here because this thing is so deep and it can do so many things. One of the amazing things with the knob is that you can use it exactly like you want to. So you can go really deep and program its depth, or you can use it as a normal scrolling wheel or a cursor controller. Let me show you. So when you connect the knob to your Mac or PC, you get the cursor control standard behavior. So this is without any software installed. For example, as you can see here, I have a web page on and I'm in Chrome and now I can scroll up and down like this. So very, very simple, super useful. Let's jump into Cubase and let's see how this translates into things that we want to do inside a DAW. So for example, I might hover on this cursor here and I can say, okay, I want to go up and down with this cursor. And it's very, very precise. I love that. And you can hear my CC121 is following right now. Now, the other cool thing that you can do is you can use this, for example, on something like an EQ. So let's say I have this band activated and I want to really listen to the frequencies and try and pinpoint an offending frequency. Let me show you how you do this. First of all, you can just, of course, do the same thing and go up and down with your gain like this. But if I flick this switch, now I'm going left and right instead, okay? So it's very easy to find, you know, to boost quite a bit and then just try and pinpoint the frequency that you want to find. Now, the cool thing is that you don't have to flick the switch all the time. If you want to toggle between the two behaviors, you can say, okay, I want to just do my gain first. So I just need to touch this, see this? I just touch it. And then when I let go, it goes back to horizontal. So I can toggle between vertical and horizontal very easily by just touching this switch here, which is really, really cool and it makes everything really fast. So I love that to begin with and this is great even without any software installed, okay? Now let me show you something else. This behavior is with this switch down. So what that means is that if I go to my fader here and start going up and down like this, as you can see, I'm moving the cursor, right? So it clicks and it moves, that's what it does. But when I flip that switch, 
I can actually change the behavior and go like this, see? So it goes back to where it was, which is really cool. And then the great thing is, if you double tap, it doesn't undo, so it's really cool. So let me do the same with this EQ, right? So I'm going to do this, double tap, and it goes back. Double tap, and it goes back to where I had it. So it's very easy to try out things and then undo, check how it was before, Really, really useful when it comes to mixing and all these things, when you try to A, B, different settings. Very, very simply, I can just double tap and go to the previous setting. How cool is that? I mean, that deserves a boom. <laughs> so it's really, really powerful. And when I first tried, I was like, wow, I can see so much use for this specific thing. So for something like a fader, I would use the drag mode. And for something like a knob, I would use the stationary mode because I want to turn this and I want it to go back to where it was, you know? I'm still controlling that same knob, but my cursor doesn't go just anywhere, you know? So instead, if I did it like this, you will see that, oh, now I can't control this anymore. So it's very, very well thought when you want to really, really just control something, it does this for you and it has so many ways that you can control things be it faders, be it knobs, be it any graphical things. For example, maybe I want to control the tempo here. So for this, I would use again the stationary mode. Okay, so I can just go like that, change the tempo like this. And then if I want to adjust it again, it goes back to the tempo. So it's very, very cool. So all the things that I showed you up to this point are things that you can do straight out of the box without any piece of software installed on your computer, right? Be it Mac or PC. It works straight out of the box. I had zero issues with it. I was ready to go immediately. Another very cool thing that you can do is you can be very precise with your editing. For example, if I select these notes here and I want to drag them up or down, I can just do it like this, see? I can just drag up, down, and you know, it's so, so precise. Now, if I want to toggle and move them left and right, I can do this as well, very, very easily. It's so it's very precise and really satisfying. Same thing here, you know, see, I can just be very precise with my notes, with my editing. I can, of course, move things in the project window. So for example, I can just take this and start moving this and it's so precise. And I love the fact that I don't have to keep my hand on the mouse and do this. That's one of the reasons why I'm using a trackable mouse, but this is so, so precise. Like seriously, it's very, very precise, this one. And I like this thing for when I'm doing minor edits. Now, when you install the software that the guys at Knob have created, which is called Knack, then you open a whole world of possibilities. You can have unlimited parameters, you can have individual settings, you can have assignments with its own sensitivities, you can have Knack bring the appropriate window in the foreground. Let me launch Knack and let me show you what it can do for you. Here you can start creating profiles, you can start adjusting things, creating settings and all these things. So let me show you how that works. Now this is freaking amazing, I have to tell you. I was blown away by this. So as you can see, I have a few profiles here. I have my Cubase profile, I have my cursor controller profile, I have my scroll wheel profile, I have my press profile, so the knob actually reacts like it's pressing the button multiple times. And I also have a profile for Retrolog, but I'm going to show you how you can build your own profiles as well. So let me show you what I have here in Cubase. So this might look a little bit daunting at first, but trust me, it's so easy to use. In my case, I have set up Knob to be able to control some things in Cubase that I use all the time. And this is great, especially if you don't have another controller in your setup, but even if you do, Knob does some things that are really, really special. As you can see right now, Knob is basically a scroll wheel. So I can go here to my fader and I can use this as my scroll wheel. It would be exactly what your mouse would do, okay? So if I go to my tempo here, I can change my tempo. Very, very simple. But let's say I want to control my pregame, okay? So I bring up my channel settings and I want to control my 
pre-gain. So what I need to do now in order to control my pre-gain is I just need to touch this and hit G on my keyboard. Check what happens in my cursor. And now I can just control this. How cool is that? Let's say I want to control the volume of this channel. So I can just tap and press V. And now I can control my volume straight away. Let's say I want to change my tempo. Tap, press T, and immediately it takes me to my tempo and I can change it. So I don't need to do lots of mass work. I can just be concentrated and work with the knob and my keyboard. So it's very, very simple. But let me show you how you assign these things because it's actually very easy. And to be honest with you, you do this once and you just forget about it. Let's say I want to assign my low cut filter to the knob, right? So all I need to do is bring up NAC and now I can set up an assignment shortcut. So let me show you how it works. Assign with, I'm gonna go control and five, okay? So what does that mean? That means that when I go back to Cubase, if I go here and press control and five, now knob knows that I've assigned this function. And now I can go here and say, okay, now I want to activate this with a hotkey. So hotkeys would be a mess normally because I have so many key commands in Cubase that I don't have space for more for a dedicated controller. So that would be a deal breaker for me. But Knob does something very, very cleverly. So you just tap on this. So touching the knob is a hotkey. And now I can say, okay, maybe I'm going to go to F for filter, right? So now I've assigned my filter to the knob. So let me show you how it works now. Now, if I go back to Cubase and I touch here and press F, you will see that my cursor immediately jumps to my filter, which is really, really powerful. And let's say I create an audio channel now. I go E, then again, I do the same thing. F, it goes straight to my filter. This is brilliant. The same thing you can do with plugins. Let me show you how it works with Retrolog, for example. If I go here, you know, I have Retrolog. Now, I have a different profile for Retrolog. And you can also auto activate a profile. So if you have, for example, the channel settings showing up on your screen, then this profile will be auto activated. If you have Retrolog on your screen, this will activate. So let me show you, if I go back to my Cubase and I press G now, okay, touch G, it goes to my pre-gain settings. Now, let me close this and let me open Retrolog. So for Retrolog, I have touch and F assigned to my filter. So if I go touch F now, boom, <laughs> I go straight to my filter. If I want to control the distortion, for example, let's assign the distortion really quickly. Let me show you how quickly you can do this. So I can assign with command Alt 2, let's say, and I'm going to activate it with uh, touch and D, okay? So now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go command Alt 2. Now if I do touch and D, it goes straight to my distortion. If I go touch and F, filter. How cool is that? Like seriously, it's such a simple concept, but the programming behind it and the way that it works is so fluid and so easy to assign so many different things and of course, yes, you have to remember the shortcuts. But let's say you want to control something that you don't control over and over again, but you are in a session and you want to control this parameter multiple times, right? And you want to return to it. So let me show you how it's done. If I want to control, let's say, the resonance here and I want to go back to it, I can just tap on this, let go. And now if I double tap on this, it goes back to resonance. So let's say I'm here, I'm doing something, double tap, resonance. Let's say I'm here, I'm doing something with the envelope ADSR, double tap, boom, back to resonance. Let's say I want to control this one, tap, double tap, boom, it goes there. So it's so easy, whether you want to assign things in a very detailed way, or if you want to just control something over and over again, it's so, so fast. And there's more. If you want to control, let's say, two parameters and you want to toggle back and forth between them. So let's say I want to control my cutoff and then the resonance because these two parameters are very closely related, right? So I can just tap. Don't let go. Go to cutoff first and then move to resonance. And now let go. Now I can go, double tap, double tap, 
back and forth from cutoff to resonance. How awesome is that? I mean, this is so cool and you can create so many different assignments so easily. You can do the same thing, let's say with a mixer, you know, you are here and you want to control maybe the relationship with these two channels. Tap and let go. And now I can go back and forth. So I can just control this, tap, double tap, control this one, double tap, boom, double tap, boom. <laughs> I've assigned the control room volume, which for me, it was a big, big deal because now I can just touch, press R and my cursor jumps on the second monitor and I can control my control room volume. I have assigned, of course, my pre-gain. I've assigned the tempo. I've assigned the filter, but it goes without saying that you can also control third party plugins, anything you want. Like seriously, now I'm going to try the HG2 one of my favorite plugins, you know that. And I'm going to control this with Command Shift 1. And I'm going to have the knob and S for my modifier. And I can go Command Shift 1. And now this is registered. So now I can go here, touch S, and I can control the saturation on this plugin. And now what I need to do is create a wildcard. So what is this? That means that we will tell knob that, okay, Whenever you see a window called Pro L2, then when I press G, go and control the game. Now let's create a wild card. Okay, so I'm going to go star black box star. Okay, and now we know that if I go to a different channel and let's say I place it here, if I touch and go S, I can control this knob. Okay, if I set it here, I can touch S, it goes straight away there and I can control my saturation. And if I close this and go to a different plugin instance, touch S, I can control this. And the last thing that I want to show you is the press mode. And here's the press mode. So now what I have is the knob pressing the same key repeatedly. And in this case, I have G and H. Let me show you. There you go, G and H. So now when I use my knob, you can see that I can zoom in, zoom out. So really, you can customize it to death. You understand now why I did this video? But now let's talk about who is this for. I think this is a brilliant device for pretty much anyone that works in a DAW, in a video editing software. Uh, photo editing is also really cool. But I found that I use this a lot for editing in Final Cut, also in Cubase, obviously, but it can control every aspect of what I can do on a computer. That's what I love about it. It's not the cheapest device, but it looks like it's very limited, but it can do way more than many controllers that I've tried in the past. And you know that I've tried quite a few controllers and this would be at the top of my list. Why did I integrate it to my setup? Very, very simple. It works in tandem with all the other controllers that I have. It works great with a CC one to one. It's a very nice complement to the AI knob. And it goes without saying that if you cannot find a CC one to one, I know they're pretty scarce right now and they're hard to get. This might be the next thing that I would suggest if you want to get this AI knob experience, which I've loved for like over a decade now with the CC one to one. Now, when it comes to the monogram, this also works very well and I actually have a very nice setup where the knob just fits into my monogram setup. And one thing that I want to mention before ending this video is the support. The support from knob is simply impeccable. I had a few questions, I emailed them, they were getting back to me super, super fast. They can understand if you're a tech savvy person, so they won't tell you, oh, have you done this? Have you restarted your computer? They're amazing. So my experience has been really incredible for them. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. It really helps. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about Knob, what you think about this controller. Is it something that you would see yourself integrated into your setup? How do you think would you use it? If you're already using one of those, let me know if you have any tips because I'm still learning it. It's so deep and I would really appreciate any tips or any cool things that you can do with it that I haven't found out yet. So thank you so much, my friends. I will see you in the next one. Bye.